Mm. All right, hey guys. Um, so I thought what I would do is I would just show you guys. Let me just make sure my sound's working. Test. Yeah, looks like it's working. Um, I thought I would just show you guys how to use ZBrush for anyone who's new with ZBrush. Uh, when you get ZBrush and you open it for the first time, um, you know, you're basically going to be presented with this light box here. Okay. That's this. This is the light box. Now, the light box is very useful. Um, you basically have everything you could possibly need <laughs> in your light box. Um, right here, the most common it puts you in is the projects. By default, it comes with this. I'll just show you real quick if I double click on this. You know, we have a head. So if you didn't want to start from scratch and you're working on like a cartoony kind of head, you know, then then you can go ahead and you could just start you know, sculpting on that or whatever, right? Um, so it's it's like, you know, it's a fast way of working. If I go to the light box here again, you could see there's another head here. And, you know, basically I just have to, I just hit no not to save that. And you just click, just tap on it twice. I'm using a Intuos 4, um, but you could use whatever you want. Okay. So the most common thing here is you would choose a spear. Okay. Um, most people would choose a spear to start off with. And you're going to see there's different kind of spears. You could see this one, this spear here. It's, it's pretty clean. Uh, it's very clean. There's clean uh, topology, which means, you know, if I sculpt on this, it's, it's going to take what I sculpt, you know, pretty, you know, pretty good. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I could sculpt on this very easily. You know, I could smooth it out and everything like that. Okay. And it's it's pretty even. Now, Lightbox can be pulled up by pressing the comma key uh, next to the M. So if I just press comma, I can literally toggle the Lightbox on and off. Okay. There's a few different spears in here. And it can get kind of confusing, especially when you're new. Um, I generally click this one. These are Dynamesh spears, so you could see this one says 128, this one says 32, and this one says 64. If I click the 128, for example, this spear is it has even more, res it just means it has more resolution. Um, so basically, if we were to go, if we were to go in here into, and don't worry about this yet, I'll show you guys what this is. A little bit later on, but right here is so it's called Dynamesh, and you could see our resolution is at 128. If I hold Control and I go under here, uh, it's going to tell you, you know, basically the resolution slider defines the overall resolution. Oops, of the Dynamesh by controlling the overall polygon density, right? So how dense is the model itself? Uh, a low resolution Dynamesh will update faster. While high resolution will take more time to update. So, what would be the use, you know, for this? You know, basically, if you're just if you're sketching something out, you're not sure what you're making yet. It's good to start in Dynamesh, but 128 honestly is not that good to me because it's too high. It's too high up already, you know. So if I go to smooth out, it's if I go to smooth out my work, which I'll, I'll explain a little later on. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be a, it's going to take a lot longer to smooth out work that I do. So what I want to do is I generally, you know, start off with the 32 as far as Dynamesh goes. Now, Dynamesh is for like like I said for sketching things out. Um so I want to demonstrate a quick example and before I even do all that, I want to show you guys how you can move around, you know, in in ZBrush and everything like that try to explain everything so first off there's draw and there's edit okay there's two buttons here now if i am in draw mode and i'm not in edit mode what happens is 
I'm not actually in a 3D space anymore. I'm in a 2D space. And you're probably wondering what's the point of this. Well, ZBrush was originally, you know, 2D more or less program um, before it became a 3D one. But there's also other uses. Um, like, you know, you could grab this information, for example, and make a um, make an alpha out of it. And the alpha is just like a kind of like a stamp, you know, in a way. So there's a lot of, you know, different uses for that. Um, but I'm not really going to dig into that because we're not really working in the 2D space of things. Okay. And you can see there's a, you know, I could drag out stuff all day, you know, with this thing. But right here. Right here it says 2.5D brushes. What I did was I'm, I'm just clicking on this. It's called a simple brush. And if I just click here, um, it brings up a menu to quickly pick something. You could see things are separated by, there's a quick pick, you know, which is probably things, you, you know, you'll select more often. There's the 3D meshes, okay? 3D meshes is what we generally work in. This, this is what we generally will work in when we're doing 3D work. And then there's 2.5D brushes. Right, so two and a half dimensional brushes, more or less. And there's all sorts of brushes in here. I mean, there's a smudge brush. And, you know, basically, this is the way people used to work. But this is not how we work nowadays. But it ha it, this does have a lot of different cool uses. Um, one, of, one of it is called, oops, sorry, it's called the MRGB Grabber. Uh, if I could find it, which I might not be able to, because again, here it is, MRGBZ grabber. So what this does is it allows you to make an alpha of your information here, because everything is on the same level, even though it's 2.5D, I can't actually, you know, do anything. But you, but you will get an alpha. And you could use this alpha to sculpt on and things like that. All right, so I'm in draw mode. You can't do the, the cool 3D that you see everybody do when you're in the in this mode. You can, but it's going to take longer. <laughs> um, you want to hit Control N to clear everything off. And then what I'm going to do is I'll just drag out. But actually, let's just go Control N. Let's hit comma to pull up our light back. So I'm going to pick the Dynamesh Spear 32. Okay. And right away, when I double click this, you notice that it puts me in edit mode. Okay, so draw and edit or enabled. So what happens if you if you're in this mode on accident? Well, basically, you know, if you're if you're going like this and you're in this mode on accident, you can press Control N, and then you can just drag with your your mouse or your Wacom tablet. You just kind of drag on the screen, like just drag down, and it'll draw it out again. And you go to press edit. And then you're back in action again. If you press F, you could frame it, meaning that you could frame your uh, your mesh. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna basically just you know kind of run down some things here. But first off is move. There's move, scale, and rotate. And then you can see here there's a move, room, and and zoom. <laughs> These are different though. They don't mean the same thing. Um, so basically what I want to show you is that this right here, it even has this uh, keyboard shortcut of W, E, R. So if I go W, I'm in a move mode. E, I'm in a scale mode. R, I'm in a rotate mode. Okay. And what this, what that mode does is it physically lets you rotate your object. Um, there's a zoom button here. I could zoom in and out. I can move around like this. I could rotate around like this. That's what these buttons do. They rotate the camera. They don't change the they don't change the object itself. Okay. If you're using a Wacom, you can hold Alt and then draw on your Wacom, and you can drag around, which is equivalent to move. And while you still have your pen. On the surface, if you let go of all, you could zoom in and out. All right. And the rotate, you just 
you just click any empty area. Not click, but you just draw on any empty area, basically. Okay. So that's how that works. Now, if I was to draw in a certain area, you could see there's a grid here by default. I'm just keeping the grid on just for uh, informational purposes so you could see what's going on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make the grid a little bit more visible for you guys. Um, well, I guess white will make it visible for you. Yeah. Oops. I didn't like that too much. Give me one second. Let's just go back into the program here. Uh, but basically, yeah, you could change you could change color background. You can customize everything to your, you know, to your heart's content. Uh, you, you could do pretty much whatever you want um, as far as the program itself goes. Okay. So you can see because I, because I had crashed for you know whatever reason, um, it put me into open. It put me into what was it? A quick save to try to recover what I was working on. I mean, but it's okay. We didn't really do anything, so I'll just go to project and I'll just double click this mat, this mesh here. Um, so I I don't want any crashes, uh, but you could see the grid. There's a grid right here. I mean, I could turn the grid on and off too. It's called the floor. If I click this button, I can turn the floor on and off. This just lets you know if, if your object's upside down usually or if it's right side up. I mean, obviously, you could do a lot more with it, but that that's what it basically does for the most part. Um, you could use it for a, a form of measurement as well. You know, if I was to want to get things accurate, Kind of like, you know, like a graph. You could kind of use it in that sense, uh, like a graph, if you wanted to. Um, so basically, you could do, you know, oops, you could pull out. I'll go over some of these things in a second. But if you were to pull out something, right, you know. You know, I could see this lines up, this lines up. You know, maybe I want these kind of line up a certain way. So I could kind of use it in that sense. And you could see it it's lining up really nicely here. Um, so if you were you were trying to be accurate with something um, to get like a certain shape, the grid could become useful to you as well. You know, it really depends on what you're trying to do, to be honest. Okay. But yeah, since I have a little bit of a shape here, at least you can see like, you know, where's tops and bottom is a little better. So if I was to rotate and just press shift, I can actually snap. Okay, I can actually snap to a certain view. So I'll do it again. I'm just rotating and then press shift, snap. Rotating, press shift, snap. Rotating, press shift, snap. Okay, now you're going to see there's something called perspective. Perspective on and off. Um, if you're trying to do something that's real, very accurate, Generally, you would keep perspective off. Uh, we usually keep perspective off when sculpting for the most part because there is a, you know, there's kind of like a distortion, you know, with that perspective can give you by default. However, if you want to keep perspective on, you can. You can sculpt with perspective on, but you might get more accurate results if you're sculpting with, with it off, especially if you're bringing it into a different program. I mean, really what matters is the end result and how something looks. But if you wanted to keep perspective on, you can go up here to document. Actually, it's not document. It is draw. So right here, you can go to draw. So you can just click here to draw. And there's an angle. So the perspective angle is at 90 degrees right now. Okay. So if I want, I could take this down. Or I could just click in here and I could just type in something like 50, which I usually will do like 50 if I'm in perspective. All right. All right. So I'm using this so you can see it. So that's zoom, and that's move, and that's rotate, and then shift snaps. All right. And then if you get a Wacom, you could see, 
you know, I could do that, you know, without having to do all that other stuff, right? Um, so it really depends on what you're using. You should definitely be using some kind of tablet. If it's not a Wacom, then something else, you know. They have some other, like, Chinese tablets that are affordable these days that, you know, you can use. But I've had my Wacom. I've had it forever. And honestly, you know, I use it all the time. And it still works like a champ. So. All right. So what I wanted to do was give a quick crash rundown on these this menu. Um, and I wanted to just, I don't want you guys to think too hard on it, but I just want to kind of go over each of these menus. Some of them I'm, I probably, I don't really use too much, so I might skip some, but, um, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of, we can kind of dock the menu too, but there's an alpha menu and I'm going to explain what alphas are and why they're important when you're sculpting and Al alphas are kind of more or less usually icing on the cake, but they can help you, you know, when you're creating shapes as well, um, you know, in a production kind of workflow, like if you're creating something. So right here by default, I'm on alpha zero one. So when I move stuff, it's, it's using this alpha. So if I change this to something like this, you know, I might get some weird results. Um, not with this one, actually. Let's use a different brush. This is the brush menu, by the way, which I don't want you to become overwhelmed because you really don't even use all these brushes. Um, I'm going to show you something else, though, because I, I, I don't really use all the brushes, but I'm going to show you kind of like the brushes that I do use. I can load in the interface layout, which I'm going to do. There we go. Now we have some brushes at the bottom here. Um, I like putting my brushes at the bottom usually if I'm on one monitor. But this way, this is so I don't have to constantly go into the menu here and look for the brush that I want. Because there's a lot of brushes here. And honestly, this, this isn't even all the brushes. Lightbox holds even more brushes. So if I go in here, there's a ton of brushes in here. I, got, I could just click in here and brush and so many brushes in here. And, you know, some of them you'll use, some of them you'll never use, some of them you might use, you know, experiment, you'll come up with something cool. Um, you know, this one actually uses a curve, which I don't really want to show you yet. It's kind of, you know, for another day. But, all right, so let's just stay focused on the task here. So you can see I have some brushes here. And these brushes that are here, I mean, you could honestly sculpt whatever you're trying to sculpt with move brush, standard, clay buildup, clay brush. And, you know, trim dynamic. If you're doing hard surface, like you're trying to make like a robot or something, you can use the H polish brush. Uh, and there's one more I would add to the list, and that is the Damien Standard brush, which is in, it's right here. I don't know why it's not, not a thing, but you could customize it and throw it in there. But I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, but I'll show you the Damien standard. What it does is it actually allows you to kind of slice into your mesh. Um, and I'm going to show you why this kind of looks ugly right now and how we can fix this. I'm not, I'm not really creating anything. I'm just kind of like freestyling off the top for the most part, just to show you guys how it works. Um, and later, and later, um, you know, in later videos, we'll, we'll go through how to create something cool. Um, but honestly, when you come into any program, it's good to just mess around and figure out how it works. If you were using Photoshop, you want to just mess with the different brushes and the settings, keep drawing different strokes until you figure out how the program works. That's the best way to learn how something works is to mess around with it. Right. Um, all right. So basically, so that's a damn standard brush. All right. So what I'm going to do now is actually going to pick, I'm going to pick the standard brush. Um, again, this is all the brushes. This right here is your stroke. There's all different kind of different strokes here. Honestly, you know, a lot of these things you could generally press control, maybe not on this. Um, but usually, you know what, it'll usually tell you what the brushes do. It's not telling me here, but I'll explain it to you because this kind of has to do with the alphas in a way. So right now by default, I'm on dots 
and I'm just going to add more resolution to my mesh. I'll show you how I do that a little later. Um, but I do want to tweak something that's kind of driving me crazy. There's there's this thing called draw size, and that's how big your brush is. So if my brush is like this, it's going to make big marks. And then if it's like this, it's going to make the small marks. Okay. All right. So not really jumping the gun. I just want to fix this because I had to reset this. Uh, I had to reset this because I was having some issues. Under, but under miscellaneous, there's a brush increment. And if you raise it higher, basically what it does, it allows you to make your brush bigger faster. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that. All right, maybe 13. Now I can get bigger and smaller, you know, a little faster. So you guys don't have to watch me do my brush so super slow just to make it bigger and smaller. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you all that in a second. So let's just go back to alphas. What I'm gonna do with the alpha is I'm gonna dock it. I'm gonna click this little button here, the circle, and I'm docking the alpha. All right. After this, we're gonna do like a little project, and I'm gonna show you what you know what brush I'm using if if I have time. Um. So right here, I'm using an alpha. Alpha's on, of course. You know, there's different alphas here. I could switch. There's an alpha slider. I can import my own alphas. When you import an alpha, generally what you would do is you can create you can create one. An alpha, all an alpha is, it just has uh, information, like white and black, more or less. And it could either be flat colors, or it could be a gradient like this. If it's a gradient like this, well, let me just go up a little higher. Uh, if it's a gradient like this, what happens is you get a nice little, you get a nicer kind of transition than if it's something like this. You know, you could see like if I was to zoom in here, I'm just using this so you guys can see to zoom in, but you could see the difference here with this circle, right? And then with this radial circle, you know, I'm getting a smoother transaction, right? So you're probably wondering why would I use this? Uh, this, you know, this can give some cool kind of texturing effects. Um, you know, I can also kind of just, just move it down. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that grid thing, the floor for now, because it's kind of bothering me. And I'm just going to change the document. I'm going to go into range. I'm just going to set this to gray so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. So basically... All I did was I, I just dialed down the background by going to document and I put the range all the way down. This way I don't have the gradient on the background. I like working like this more or less most of the time. Um, and the other thing is there's matte cap gray. There's different materials here, but we're going to get through that. I'll give you a quick crash course, but basically you could just choose any material you want. Um, you know, and this is the kind of material you would kind of sculpt in, you know, so you might want to sculpt in this or you might want to sculpt in this. I usually kind of sculpt in this one, matte cap gray for the most part, because it doesn't have all that shininess and all the craziness to kind of distract you on what you're trying to do. So I'll usually do something that's kind of dimmed down and then I'll kind of, you know, I'll kind of experiment and see how my model looks. With different ones. I mean, you could just change it on the fly. I could just change it to anything I want. You know, it really doesn't matter. But for now, we're just going to stick with gray. Keep it a little simple here. All right. So, yeah, so the alpha panel, I can import an alpha if I wanted to by just pressing import and looking for an alpha. Now, I think I have an alpha. Um, so I could kind of demo this, how this works to you guys. Oops. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, you know what? I probably don't have an alpha on this computer. I thought I did. I mean, I can create one if you want. It takes five seconds. We can either, if you want, I mean, since we're doing alphas, I wanted, I could show you guys quick how to create an alpha. Since it's like, you know, it's a quick, quick, you know, excuse that. That's just work. That's just work. 
Um, but basically what I can do is I can do, let's do, I'll just do 5,000 by 5,000. Okay. Uh, except the resolution. I would change the resolution. It's at 300, which is like if you were printing something, we're going to do it to 72. Okay. So I'm just changing the resolution of this. And then I'm just kind of just zooming in. So I'm going to do a custom alpha that we can use in ZBrush. And I'm not doing anything crazy, really. I'm just going to use some basic shapes just to show you, um, you know, what's possible. Oops, I was hitting the wrong button here. And if anybody doesn't know how to use Photoshop, I apologize. I will cover it Photoshop in, uh, in another chapter or another stream. Oops. I think I put this on the same layer. Hold on a second. All right, I'm going to create a new layer, actually, and then I'm going to drag this, this one here. Okay. And then I'm going to just double click it and I'm going to change it to color overlay and I'm going to make the color. Uh, let's just do, yeah, I guess, I guess we could do a gray. We could do a gray for this one. Let's try this. Let's see. I'll make this a little smaller. Let's just make this smaller and then we'll duplicate this shape and then we'll make that a little smaller. And we'll make it, make this one a white. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna, let me just hide this brush stuff here. Okay, so let me just grab this out real quick. So, I can do that. so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab all this and I'm going to, I'm going to change them. I'm just going to make it a little bigger, you know, so it fits the uh, shape a little better. Oops. And again, I made this, what, 5,000 by 5,000. And this is the alpha. Alpha is like a stencil, basically, like something you can stencil in. If you were doing like a letter or something. Oh, maybe we should do a, we should do a letter, right? Let's, you want to do a letter? We'll do a letter. Let's do one letter. Let's put one letter on this. Let me just go to a new layer and I'll use a letter. Let's just put 3D. Sounds cool to me. Um, okay, so now we have, you know, our alpha. And, and alpha, like I said, it's just black and white colors. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be in, in color. Um, I don't think I'm, I don't think my black is black. Let me just double check to make sure my black is pure black. Uh, make it pure black. There we go. Get that pure black and just double check. Make sure this is gray real quick. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this image. I'll go to file save for web. All right. And I'm just going to save this out. I'm going to save this to the desktop, I guess, for now. And I'll just call it 3D. Because why not? We're doing 3D. Now I'm going to hit import. And I'm going to go to my desktop, which is messy. Please excuse that. And just press this for 3D. And now we actually have this in here. So now <laughs> what I'm doing now is I'm actually sculpting with that thing that I just created. And you can't really see what's going on. Or rather you can see the you can see the 3D right here, but you're probably wondering, you know, it's it's doing it on both sides, you know what I mean? So, I'm going to I'm going to show you why it's doing it on both sides. If you press X, it'll just do it on one it'll just do it on one side. If you want to mirror what you're doing on both sides, you press X again. This is called your symmetry. Okay. 
So X toggles symmetry on and off. Very important. Um, when you're starting out, you generally work in symmetry. And then when you want, let's say if you're working on a face, you know, you kind of just want to do wrinkles. Then you kind of you take off the symmetry with the X button. You start kind of going through and doing this, that, and the third. So right here, right here we have an alpha loaded into our channel. And what I'm going to do is if I hit, I'm going to go through this real quick. So this by default is the dots. And you can see what happened. It, it kind of, it, it's not like a, a solid stroke. Like this one's more like a solid. Freehand is more fr solid. You know, so I kind of switch between dots and freehand sometimes. The drag rack allows you to drag. It allowed me to drag this alpha out without it doing it a billion times. Because right now it's doing it a billion times. I can't even see what it is. All right. So we're going to actually do it on the back because it's kind of easier to see what's going on here. So what I'll do is I'll click drag rect and I have my 3D alpha selected. All right. Look at that. See that? Now you can see. You know, we were able to add a custom alpha that we made in Photoshop in less than like five seconds, right? We were able to add it on onto our model. And this is good for things like, you know, emblems or logos, you know, like I was doing the Thundercats and to do the Thundercat logo, this is what you kind of do. You do this because it's a lot easier, you know, than trying to sculpt it out or anything like that. Um, but yeah, lettering is good to do this way. Um, so definitely, you know, lettering is just as important as your sculpt too. Like if you look at traditional sculptors that do like model kits, you'll notice that, you know, they really put a lot of work into their lettering. Um, and you can too, you know, with ZBrush, you can, and you could 3d print this stuff out too, you know, which is awesome. Um, so, I mean, now's a great time to jump into 3d. If you haven't get yourself a 3d printed, a pretty affordable and, you know, you can go crazy. Um, you can also, I can also invert. If I click invert, it'll actually invert the 3d. So now it's in, in there. You see that it's kind of engraved inside of the, inside of the mesh, which is pretty cool. All right. So that's, that's pretty much how that works for the most part. Uh, I could flip it horizontally. I can flip it vertically. You can see when I drag down, it's upside down. So what I could do is I could do flip vertical and then actually, and then I have to flip horizontal as well. And now when I drag down on it, I could see it. I want to take perspective off. You want to take perspective off when you're doing a drag wreck like this, because it'll, it'll be a lot more accurate when perspective is on. Um, it's kind of like off to the side and everything like that. So take perspective off, rotate, hit hold shift to snap snap into this view and draw it out you can draw it out you know just like that and then let go and bam you're good to go all right so that's how that works for the most part um there's a little i think i think what you have to do too there's actually a make 3d button which is kind of cool um which i'm going to go over so but this is you know this is pretty much like the alphas and ZBrush comes with a lot of alphas already. If I click here, you could see all the ton of alphas there are here. There's a lot. And you'll notice that uh, this right here, Make 3D, you know, I don't really use this Make Text. Um, but the Make 3D I use, like if I'm doing lettering and stuff, you know, you have those options here as well. Okay. There's a ton of options in ZBrush too. So I'm kind of just showing you what I use, but I mean, just because you know, this is all I use doesn't mean that's all you got to use. You can use as much as you want ZBrush. And in fact, I encourage you to explore, you know, ZBrush and figure out how you can get it to work for you. You know, come up with your own workflow that makes that allows you to make cool stuff, you know, because at the end of the day, it's all about making something cool, something, you know, you like, something other people like, something that you love to do. Um, or maybe you just want to make something, you know, for fun on your own, you know, whatever the case is, ZBrush is the program to do it. Okay.
All right. Now, there's a way to do a radial fate. Um, I think it's this. Now, this is restore configuration. Forgive me, but there's a way to get rid of these these lines here. Don't think that you have to keep those lines on there. Uh, let me just try to look it up real quick. Radial fade and ZBrush. And this is kind of like, you know, usually I just Google stuff. Um, Pixelogic, the creators of ZBrush, they have they have the, uh, what do you call it, a, a ZBrush document, which is docs.pixelogic.com. So if you type anything in here, you can search the documentation. They have online documentation basically of everything on, you know, how everything works. Oh, here it is. RF is radial fade. All right. So I was already, I was already able to figure out what I was looking for. So RF is radial fade. And RF is right here. It's set to zero. Now, if I set it to 100 and then I draw it out again, look at that. I'm getting a smoother transition here. Now, you can see I'm still getting that shape at the bottom, right? Like everything looks smooth. I'm getting this shape at the bottom. The reason why I'm still getting this shape at the bottom is because I created that shape and it's a gray color. So the gray is going to bump the surface, you know, because it has information on it. There's no way to really avoid that. Um, well, there's a way to avoid that. I'll show you one. And this is kind of an advanced. You're going to learn your first advanced trick here. Okay. So let me just let me just go here real quick and um, I'm just trying to double check something. There's a way to drag accurately too, and for some reason, <laughs> oh, I think it's in here. Here it is. If you hold Control and Shift, you can get a more accurate. Let's. Oh, I guess you're going to learn two advanced things. If you hold Control and Shift, Control and Shift, you're going to get a different options here. See, I'm holding Control Shift, Control Shift. See how it's changing? Control Shift, Control Shift. All right, so right here, if I'm holding Control Shift and I keep it held down, all right, what I'm going to choose is the stroke. I can keep it to, I can change it to square, and I can change it to center. Square makes it a square, and center makes it in the center. It'll draw it in the center of whatever I'm working on. I'm still holding Control and Shift at the same time. I'm going to pick that alpha that we created, which is called 3D. I'm still holding Control and Shift. See if I let go, I get something different. Holding Control and Shift. Click in, look at that. All right, so now, I'm well, you know what it is? I'm getting it. I can't rotate it. It can't be, like, uh, distorted. So I'm holding Control and Shift. I'm dragging out with my Wacom tablet. And then if I hold Space Bar, all at the same time, I'm holding Control Shift. Then I'm dragging out, and then I'm holding Space Bar. Space Bar is allowing me to move this around. Okay, so now I can see exactly where I want to put this. So I say I want to put this exactly right here. I'm going to let go of drawing on the surface on my Wacom. Um, and you could see something crazy kind of happen, but but this is, you know, this is what happened here. Now, it looks like there's a, I believe there's a curve or something that's making it get clipped. I think that's why it's doing that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll hold control shift, drag out, position it. Yeah. You know what it is? I'm using um, something called a clip. So actually what it's doing is it's cutting through the surface like hot butter. So what we want to do, and that, and now you just learned another advanced thing, but if you hold control and shift. What you're doing is you can cut through the surface. See that? I cut. I just cut through that surface here. If I hold Control Shift and then I drag out and then I hold Alt and it turns red, I cut out of the surface of the, of the you know the 3D of the geometry. So really, what we want is we want to do a mask. And a mask, you hold Control, and you can see now I get different options here. So that's three different options. So we have a default option here with brushes and it's dragging the alpha. 
if we hold control and shift, we have um, selection tools, slice tools, things of that nature. Um, and then if we hold just control, we get a mask. And a mask is like, think of a mask as if like you were putting scotch tape on your sculpt, on a, on a sculpt, on clay. You can't sculpt on that area because there's there's tape over it, you know, kind of thing. Or, or or better yet, like if you were doing a painting and you wanted a straight line, you'll see usually people put like a piece of tape so they can get that line. And then they paint and then they remove the tape. So if I go like this and then I paint and then I remove the tape, that area doesn't get affected. All right. So... <laughs> So let me just show you that. So I'll, I'll hold control to get a mask. And by default, I can just kind of draw in a mask, you know, just by holding the control key. So here we go. We got a mask. Now I let go of control. I still have my mask here. And you see I have a standard brush. Now I'm, I'm drawing out that same shape again. Now I let go. And you can see what happened there. You know, so it's pretty, you know, masks are pretty... Very, very useful, actually. You should definitely be using masks, um, which we're going to do right now. So I'm going to hold control to use the mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to use drag rect. Drag rect, just like I said, allows me to drag out a rectangular you know, selection. I think actually we want rect. Rect and drag rect are two different things. But rect gives you more control. All right, so I'm going to do rect and I'm going to do square and center. Square and center again, and I'm going to grab my alpha again. I'm still holding control this whole time. Okay, so now I'm holding control and I'm dragging it out. This is kind of what I wanted before. Uh, I'm getting a border, but. And I think I'm getting a border because of my own. It's my own fault, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, I can get rid of that border, though. One way to do it. You could see this is a mask. I'm actually, before I even say that, what I just did was I created a mask. I didn't paint on the surface. I made a mask. And the mask is, is non-destructive. So I can remove the mask, you know, if I want to later on. If I pick a different brush like this clay brush here and, you know, kind of just starts doing something like this. You know, you could see that because I have a mask. It's starting to bump up the surface. See that? Or if I hold control, I can invert my mask by clicking here. I can invert my mask. Um, let me just fix this up real quick. If I hold control and I choose, if I click here while holding control, which you can't do for some reason. Uh, hold on a second. I actually need, I can do a lasso. If I hold control and I choose a lasso, I can actually, while holding control, just draw on my Wacom and make another mask and get rid of the areas I don't want. And I kind of have to rotate around here and then kind of just clean it up a little bit. Okay. So now it's clean. Now, if I don't want this area, uh, I would generally hold control. But I would choose, well, I, I would probably choose an, a rectangle. Not with this. The So what I did was I chose a rectangle. I'm going to take off the square in the center, though, because I don't want it to be square. I don't want it to be center. I'm, going, I'm still holding control. And what I'm doing is I'm just dragging this out. And what's going on now is I'm getting rid of the mask. I'm getting rid of this area of the mask that I don't want because I don't want this part of the mask. And I, I, I'll just kind of cut it like right here because I think that looks good like that. All right. And now I have a cleaner mask. So if I just go like this. And then I hold control and I kind of just go like this and drag on the screen. I can get rid of the mask. All right. So we have that on the surface. Now that kind of looks, it kind of looks ugly though, right? Um, you know, using these brushes. So there's other ways to pull this shape out. I'm going to show you. And again, I mean, this is the still custom alpha we created here. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the move tool, which is W, and I could just kind of pull this out like this. And this is a little bit more accurate. See that? I could literally pull this out, you know, using this arrow here. Move just moves it out on the surface. The only thing that's being affected is the unmasked areas of the mask. Okay? So you could see that there. Another way that I could do it, um, be besides using this move, I could use a move brush as well. There's three different ways that I know of that you can do it. Um, so if I use this move brush here, and you use the bracket keys next to the letter P on your keyboard to make the make it bigger and smaller. If you have a Wacom, you could actually just click and go to brush size on, on some of them. And it has like a wheel where you can kind of just, it's a touch wheel where you can kind of make it bigger and smaller really fast, which is nice. So what I'll do is I'll make this really big. I'm going to make this really big, probably a little too big. The focal shift I'm going to pull out too. Um, and now if I just pull this out, <laughs> if I do like crazy, you could see, you know, what we just did. We have like a crazy effect. Um, and you're probably like, oh, well, it doesn't look that well, right? If I hold alt and I pull out, now I can pull things out very straight and it looks a lot cleaner. I mean, you wouldn't pull things out this much though, usually, you know, depending on what you're making. Oops. I just hit the wrong button. So I'm going to hold alt. And I'm using the move brush and I'm just dragging on my Wacom and I could pull out or I could push in. Matter of fact, you know, if you want to push in, we can push in. There we go. Now we just pushed it in. All right. So I'm going to hold alt. I'm going to pull it out. There we go. Now you guys know how to make a little stencil here. Now the other way, the third way, <laughs> which I'm probably getting my head of myself, but I wanted to show you while we're in here is there's something called the the deformation palette or deformation. Um, so if you click deformation, you're going to see a slew of options. And I say a slew you know, quite literally here. But what you want to do is you could use something called in flat, which is this one right here. And if I use in flat and I use this slider, I usually do this with the mouse because it's a little easier for me. But I can literally pull in and out on the surface. So we're getting that same kind of effect going on here. All right. All right. And if I hold control and I drag on the screen, I get rid of my mask. Now, if you hold control and drag on your screen again, you're going to get something called DynaMesh. And we didn't really go over DynaMesh, but you don't want to do that. If nothing's visible and you hold control, you don't want to do that well, just yet. You don't want to mess with that yet. There's a, there's a few different things, you know, in this program. Um, but, yeah, you don't want to mess with that yet. <laughs> Trust me on that. Um, I want to point out some things. You could see here that's a little bit, uh, it's a little wonky here, right? So how could you clean up areas like this? Well, you could hold shift and then, you know, go on the screen and you could smooth it out and it'll, it'll make it kind of clean. That way, if you wanted to do it like that, I would do it, you know, with X, make sure symmetry is on by pressing the X button and then kind of just, you know, make your brush a little smaller. I wouldn't use this. This is the intensity of the brush, like how strong the brush is. I'm going to dial it down to like 30. The intensity is just how strong the brush is. It's kind of like how, how much do you want this to affect this, you know? Do you want it affected a lot or a little bit? You know, we just want to kind of affect it a little bit. So I could just go in here and kind of smooth it out. That's one way to clean it up. And I mean, this is a sculpting program too. So things are going to, you know, it'll look a little bit. What's the word? It'll look a little bit, I don't know, clayish. You know, if you if you kind of smooth it out, smoothing is like taking water to your clay, basically. You know, if you're smoothing something out, you're kind of just taking water to your clay. You know, and maybe and maybe this is what you want. You know, maybe this is something that looks clean to you. And I mean, it's not really that clean, to be honest, but 
you would want something cleaner than that. All right, so that's one way to clean it. There's another thing called polish. So you can hit, you can just kind of drag up this polish feature here. All right, and this will kind of just go over everything for you. And that might work a little better for you. You know, if you polish, if you use that polish, or if you do uh, polish by features, maybe. Let's see, if you polish by the features, or if you polish, or if you just do a polish on it, right? So I did a polish by features and a polish just by, you know, dragging these sliders. These sliders will affect the mesh immediately. Um, that, that didn't work too well. Maybe if I just do the polish alone. The polish gives semi-good results. Uh, you can see there's some issues here. So, but this is just one way. I don't want to get too ahead of things. I'll kind of show you some advanced cleanup a little later on. But, I mean, this kind of gets you started on things, at least. So, yeah, so that's that's kind of the way that you use the alpha. Let me show you some other ways that you use the alpha. There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot to cover in this program. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. A lot. Um. Now, if I change this to a spray, I didn't go over color spray because we actually didn't start painting yet. And painting is something that comes like, you know, in the end, like after you sculpt and you have everything looking really nice, then you want to paint a little later on. Um, I mean, if I click color spray, though, it actually won't even work <laughs> right now because you can't be in a move. You have to use like a standard brush usually to color spray. And you have to make sure this thing called RGB is on. And you have to take this Z add off. See what I mean? It gets a little kind of crazy. And I'm still not color spraying yet. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> now we're color spraying. So I'll just color spray real quick on the surface. You can see you can literally paint on your surface. And it, it give a cool, nice detail. Like if you're making an alien, color spray could be good. You know, they get some, some random effects for an alien. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Don't worry. We'll get to that. But for now. I want you to choose spray, not color spray, because color spray sprays with color, and we don't want to do that yet. So we just want to do a regular spray. RGB is red, green, blue channel, okay? MRGB is material red, green, blue channel. Um, this is just material. This is just RGB. I'll explain all that a little later. Material and colors, basically, that's what these represent. Z add and Z sub, that's what we're working with here, the Z add. So right now I'm spraying on my model this I'm spraying the alpha that we created the 3D alpha that we created I'm literally just spraying it all over my model and we're kind of getting a pretty cool effect to be honest I, I like what we're seeing here it's kind of looking cool a little messy right but but cool I mean you know you basically would just just go crazy on it you know boom and we're done. Call it a day. <laughs> no. But so spray can spray your alpha on your mesh. Spray can spray your alpha on your mesh. This is a mesh, by the way. I don't know if I explained it, but we're gonna pick some we're gonna pick a different shape. Let's pick something like these circles here. This comes in ZBrush these circles, so if you were doing texturing on skin. You would use alpha again. Alpha is kind of like one of those last stage things. Like after you get your muscles and your form, you want to go over your dinosaur or whatever it is, and you just want to. Well, you don't want to go crazy though, but you know you could just you could spray it. You know, I would say, you know, lower your intensity, spray it like that a little bit. Maybe this is a little bit crazier here. Give it some variation. Make your brush smaller. Spray here really small. Make your brush bigger. Spray here. And you can see now we have a whole different beast here. If you hold Alt, by the way, you can dig into the clay. So if I want to spray inside, like if I want to really affect the surface of this thing. Let me just zoom in so you can see that. Uh, look at that. See that? So now I'm, I'm affecting the surface by spraying inwards. I'm holding Alt. 
I could go crazy on this right now. See that? Look at that. And then if I don't hold alt, I'm just spraying on top of the surface. Now, if I want, I could bring my Z intensity all the way up. I'm going to show you 100% intensity. Whoa. Kind of crazy, right? All right. So that's 100% intensity. If I want, let's say, 50% intensity, it's still a little crazy. I could hold shift and kind of smooth this down too if I wanted to. So you could see, I mean, alphas are pretty, pretty cool, man. They're pretty important. They have different usage. Um, let me show you one more other usage that you can do with the alpha, which is the make 3D option. And we kind of already touched on this. I don't really mess with these. You could you could just change all different settings and add noise and all sorts of things to your alpha, but you can even adjust your alpha with the curve here. But I usually don't mess with all this. You could if you want, though. Experiment. I invite you to experiment. I mean, that's what. I mean, you, you can create so much happy accidents, you know, this way. So right here under create, we have a make 3D button, and right here the resolution is set to 64. That's the mesh resolution after we make, you know, create a 3D. Um, so what we want to do, you, you could see what happened was when I clicked it, it's taking this alpha and it's it's trying to make it, well, it's it's taking this alpha rather, and it's trying to make it into 3D. If I hit make 3D on this, <laughs> you could see what it did. It kind of, it tried to make this look 3D. Um, we'll hit make 3D again. Might crash the program. Oh, there we go. <laughs> now we have some 3D. <laughs> we got 3D on both sides. <laughs> Two sides of the world. There you go, instant 3D. All right. So, you, man, I mean, there's so much cool stuff you can do with this. You can change the depth. Let's do it. I, hit, I click Make 3D button again, and it's just going to update the same mesh again. Now it's like, it's really like crazy out there. So maybe you want the depth inwards to just kind of go, you know, backwards a little bit. Click it again. All right. It's a little bit more on the surface now, a little bit more, I would say, you know, controlled. All right, so we just we just got um, you know some 3D going on. If I click, oh, where's that alpha at? That's weird. Uh, let's go back here. I swear that this one alpha is not loading or something, but or I can't see it. I don't know. Let's make 3D. Let's just give it a second. I picked like a circular. It was like a circular alpha, like with a cutout in the middle. Um, <laughs> it didn't even do what I wanted. Um, so let's just use let's. Oh, let's. You know what? Let's try this arrow here. And hit make three D. <laughs> so we, you know, we kind of got the arrow. Um, and, and it gets it. It'll really get it if you have. Uh, what do you call it? I'm going to do one more like demonstration real quick. Just so you, I want make 3d to really hit home with you. So we're going to go back into Photoshop and I love making stuff like in Photoshop or illustrator, like my stencils. And then it's good for like, if you're making like crazy detail on a sword, that's a crazy pattern. You don't want to have to sculpt, um, stuff like that. You know, it's really good for that. So I'm just going to kind of take everything off here. I'm only want, I only want the 3D to be to be visible, and we'll make it bigger too. And maybe we'll change the font just to be bolder. I'm kind of just using like you know default stuff here, but all right. So I just made this a little bolder, and you can see I'm just using simple color, black, just black. I'm gonna save it out again, and save it as 100. That's fine. Oh, by the way, the hot, the bigger your image is, the better resolution. Like when you drag it, it'll be a lot cleaner. Like right now, this is twelve hundred, but if I was to make this five thousand, which I was trying to do in the beginning, but I set it to three hundred. That's besides the point. If this was five thousand by five thousand, then you know it'll be a lot cleaner. Matter of fact, let me just real quick just make it clean. I'll go to canvas size, right, and I'll just do five thousand pixels. So I want 5,000 pixels by 5,000. You generally want a, a perfect square when you do your alphas. Um, I recommend. Okay. 
Now let's see if we can export this out here. Actually, we're not there yet. We not there yet, yo. All right, so whoa, let's make it bigger and let's get this background where it needs to be. I'm just gonna throw a piece of white behind there, piece of rectangle on that, real quick, quick. Uh, all right, let's try this again. So I'm gonna export this, save for web. Now we have 5,000 by 5,000, it's gonna take a little bit more time. You know, if this doesn't make it crisp, I don't know what will. So I'll just call it 3D1, I guess. Why not? All right, so I'm saving that. Let's go back into ZBrush, and we're going to go to Import. And we got that 3D right there. I'm going to choose that 3D. And we're going to click uh, Make 3D. And then we're going to pray. <laughs> pray. Oh, yeah, there we go. Woo! Instant lettering, right? Now, if we click inverse and we click make 3D again, I clicked inverse to inverse it because right now it's cutting into it. You can see here we have, we have our lettering now. And uh, press control D, I can add resolution to it. I mean, it's, it's not... This one's not perfect right now, but you know it's it's something. It could be good enough for what you're trying to do, depending on what you're doing. That is, um, for print, you know, it's, it's not going to be the best because it has this these edges going here. But you get the idea. So yeah, alphas are very important. Use alphas only when necessary, when you need to use them. All right, so that's that's the alphas, <laughs> and that's a little bit long-winded um we're gonna go over brushes uh, i've kind of already touched brushes and you can see i can dock as many palettes as i want by the way i could just click here and just click there and have all my brushes here um since we're done with alphas we can literally just click this button here to close it it'll go away all right so if i click this it goes away and then if i click here i can make things bigger and small bigger uh, expandable or collapsible, right? And if you hold shift and you click, you can keep things open. If you don't hold shift and you just click on like something, right? Then the other one's going to close. So if I click geometry and I click subtool, geometry closes. If I hold shift and I click geometry, it stays open and subtool stays open. And we'll go we'll go over that. That's that's a lot of stuff right there, man. Don't even worry about it. Don't sweat it. All right, so next, all right, so we're going to we're going to put these brushes over here for a second here. Now brushes get kind of crazy. All right, brushes get really crazy. There's so many brushes and in ZBrush and people make ton of brushes. You, and honestly, like it's just like Photoshop if you use Photoshop, you don't need every brush ever made, you know. There's some really good brushes though um that you should have. But you don't need, every time somebody makes a brush, you don't need to go crazy and go get it. I mean, there are some times where you have to, where it's like, whoa, it's like night and day. But yeah, it really depends on what it is. You can make everything with just these brushes here. Like, I could pretty much make whatever with just these brushes here, plus the damn standard brush, which isn't showing right now. Oh, there it is, damn standard. So right here, um, you know, instead of clicking here... You have this. You have the brushes here. You can see all the brushes. Not even all of them, but... Oh, excuse me. But, yeah, there's a lot of different brushes here. Not even all of them. Just some. So we have a load brush. We have a save as brush. We have a clone brush. Um, so, yeah, you could load your own brushes in here. As, like, a one-time thing. Let's say you, like... You need a, a rock brush, you found it online, you want to just use it real quick, quick, just load it in and start working with it. Um, you could save a brush. If you save as a brush, you don't want to overwrite brushes. If you save a brush as something else, 
if I take this clay brush and I do save as on this clay brush and I just call it clay custom, right? You know, then it, it keeps, it keeps the original clay brush. Um, you know, it'll have both brushes in there, but I think I overwrote it anyway. Uh, I'll clone, clone brush. That's what it was. So just undo that. I think clone brushes will actually not save. Save as like, I, it's like renaming it, I believe. So right here's the clay brush. If I click clone, there we go. We have a clone of that brush and it gave it an underscore of one, right? And just so I know, if I hit C, I could see the original clay brushes right here, All right? And then we have a clay underscore one, which is all the way down here, <laughs> but it, it's literally like right here. So here's our clay one brush, which is the one we created. Now I could take the clay brush and I could choose clay custom one. Okay. So now we are, here we go. We got our own custom clay brush. Let me just get a different. Let's do a setup real quick. I'm just going to go to project. I'm literally going to create a new project. So I'm just going to do that default sphere again. I'm going to click no. I don't want to save my changes. And yeah, we got it. We got a spear here. Okay. All right. So each of these brushes, they do all sorts of things. And, and you can see here, we don't, we don't mess with that. Um, you can see here that there's actually a light box brushes, which, which it basically is equivalent to if you press comma key and then you click brush. All right. So there's light box brushes and light box brushes are, are just, there's just so many brushes in ZBrush that they don't put it all in. They don't put all the brushes right here for you. Like it would just, it's just so many. So they put the extra ones in here and there are some really good ones in here that are hidden. Um, you know, which I, I mean, I could show you some, especially like these polish brushes. Like there's some good polish brushes in here, like this hard polish. I think it was this hard brush. Yeah. I like this. I like this polish brush. This is good. Like if you're doing hard surfaces, you know, so there's a, there's a different brush for each task. Um, but you can see, I can quickly start, you know, creating something just by using, um, this one brush. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm only using a one brush. I'm holding alt. Now holding alt on certain brushes, by the way, and drawing with them just by, you know, scribbling on your Wacom or, what, or whatever you're doing, it uh, it's pulling out on the surface. It's not actually pushing in. So so some of the, most, br most of the brushes by default will, you know, they will do that. They will, uh, they usually will, push out on the surface, not pull in, pull in or dig in or carve in, whatever you want to say is when you're holding alt usually. But, but again, on this one, if I'm holding alt and I'm just kind of, if I'm holding alt and I'm drawing, it's pulling it out. Okay. It's a lot to learn, a lot to learn. I mean, it's going to this. This is going to seem confusing to a lot to a lot of you guys, but once we actually do like a project, I'm going to take you step by step how I'm doing it, what brushes I'm using. Um, maybe we'll do like a skull or something like that. That might be good to get your feet wet. So you can see just by using this one brush, though. I mean, you know, I could just kind of tap, 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 tap. tap, tap. Tap on the surface and get some cool effects, right? If I hold shift, I can smooth, by the way. It's like a sandblaster. Um, a lot of issues that people do, well, a lot of common mistakes new new people do is they want to, they'll make something and then they'll just smooth it and get rid of everything, you know, but, you know, don't do that. Don't do it. I mean, if if you sculpt something and you smooth it out and you just can't see what it is anymore, then you kind of you did it too much. You smoothed too much. You shouldn't really be worrying about smoothing right away. You should worry about you know laying in the shapes, getting everything right, and then kind of smoothing as a whole, you know, a little bit. 
But there's different kind of smoothing, which is another thing i got to show you guys, right? There's a lot of stuff to show you guys. Oh, this is cool. Maybe uh, let's see what we can create here. I mean, I, I could just I could just play around for hours. I mean, we're only using one brush. <laughs> we're using one brush right now. Let's kind of wait. Let's chip this area right here. I'm gonna make my brush smaller. And like again, make your um when you're working your first, you know, have your brush really big, you know, and then make it smaller afterwards. Okay. When you make the brush smaller afterwards. Oh man, you get some cool effects, right? Get the big shapes down first. Make the brush smaller, and start digging in, and go and down, uh, fine tune it more and more. And this is how when people paint, this is how they do it. Like if somebody's coming up with a, a concept or something, they'll make big shapes first, and then they'll kind of make those shapes smaller and smaller and smaller, and then all of a sudden, boom, it starts to look like something. Right? So that's kind of how this is this is a back and forth process it really is a back and forth process sometimes i just move out because i don't like how it's looking and then i'll just kind of redo the shape there so i'll smooth be like mm, don't like it reshape it let's do it again let's do it again bernard dog all right so Another cool thing with this polish brush, and again, this one's buried in the menu. It's called Polish Hard. Um, if I was to make, I'm going to hold Alt and just draw like this, hold Alt, draw like that. And if I kind of want to make this like a smoother transition right here, um, without holding Alt, I can kind of just kind of go down there and just go over it. I'm going back and forth like this way. You know, and just going over the surface. You see that? And I'm getting a different shape here, and then I can kind of just build up on that shape a little bit, push the shape a little bit here. You know, you know, go back over that edge again, dig in. You know, so I mean, whew. one brush, guys, one brush to rule them all. <laughs> You know, you could see right right away though we get some cool stuff. And then maybe you don't like the shape. I mean, another thing you do is kind of if you're just kind of messing around like me, kind of <laughs> make the brush bigger and be like oh, I don't like this, man. Let's just change it up. Let's change it up. Oh yeah, man, it's looking good now. I like it's done, ready, ready for print. I'm smoothing this out. I don't like this shape. So you could see, I mean, all with just this one brush. I mean, I'm, I'm basically getting something that looks a little bit worthwhile, you know. I'm getting something here. That, that's a nice little transition. I like that. I smoothed that out because I didn't want it to be so harsh. Um, so we, we already cussed on Z Intensity. If I hold shift, you could see that the Z intensity is for the smooth too. So if I bring my smooth to 100, I'm just obliterating everything I did. It's like, bye bye. Control Z to get rid of that. Undo that, rather. You also have a history thing up here to undo's. So if I click here, I can literally just go back and go to the beginning. Like if, I, if there was something I really liked in the beginning or something, I could literally just go back here and be like, oh, I really like this. Save this out. Import it into my other project. You know what I mean? So it's 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 pretty cool. Pretty cool. But it saves your history. So we'll go back before the smooth destruction. And if I hold shift and I bring this smooth down and then I smooth, you know, that's a little better. You know, you get a little bit more control there. Um then there's a focal shift and there's a draw size. The draw size is the size of your brush. The focal shift, I always get this wrong, so I'm going to read it. It shifts the effective curve so the intensity is drawn closer to the center of the positive value or away from the center of the negative value. Okay, so right now my focal shift is not really that strong. Um, 
if you don't have much focal shift and you sculpt with a big brush, what it does is it's it's doing like small, you know, like see how it's making that circle. Usually my brush would have had to be like this to make that kind of circle. Now it's making an even smaller circle. So that's the focal shift. Right? If I let me just make the brush really big to demonstrate that. So you can see there's two circles here. So there's there's an inner and an outer. The outer is your draw size, your inner is your focal shift. So what area do you want it to be affected? Um, if I do it like this, it's just going to kind of affect that middle area in a way here. I mean, you know, you could play around with that, with the focal shift. If you wanted to get something accurate, you take your focal shift completely off. And then you kind of can just go over the surface. Um, but you can also see, oh, that kind of looks cool. Uh, I can't even make that shape again. Let's go back to that. That kind of looks cool. Yeah, I like it. Kind of. Um, right now I have no focal shift on it. And I'm getting kind of like a weird weird thing going on here. See that? Let me turn the focal shift on. And it's a little better. So the focal shift controls different stuff. Play around with it if you're having issues like, you know, making a selection or something like that. You know, play around with the focal shift of the brush. All right, so the light box, I mean, wow, we only tucked one brush in here. And I don't want to go on a tangent or go crazy here, but I mean, there's a lot of different polished brushes. There's all different brushes in here that you can use to, to do hard surface work. Um, I'm going to do a cut. You know. I don't have much resolution right now, so it's kind of... Which is another thing that we have to learn. The resolution of your mesh. The density of your mesh. So much to learn. We'll get through everything. I promise we'll get through it. All right, so if we go up, 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 and away, um, there's a lot of brushes in here. Um, let's see. There's a form brush, or layer brush, rather. Layer brushes are cool. There's already a layer brush default that's in the thing, but that is not a layer brush, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's not really a layer effect. This is a different layer brush. This is a roll. So this kind of rolls on the surface. And it does like, I don't know, it does like some weird stuff. But honest, the, the layer brush, the regular layer brush, which I just clicked, that's the, the what do you call it, the behavior of a layer brush. Is. It goes on the surface, and if you don't let go, it builds on top of that. So it gives you like an even... It gives you like some even, you know, like an even surface thing going on. You see what I mean? Like it's it's continuing, it's continually being even on the surface. It's not, it's not like this, you know, it's not like, ooh. it doesn't look like crap. It doesn't look like that. You know, it looks nice and smooth. So we usually, this is a brush you use, like you're making bolts. The bolt brush, the layer brush. Well, I mean, this is a quick and dirty way to make bolts. You know, you can just hold all or something. Click. Yeah, there you go. You got bolts. Um, or you don't have to hold all. And you could just, you could do a drag rect on the surface. You see I have a circle alpha. All right. So you kind of just kind of drag out on the surface. You can drag that alpha on the surface, however you want to do it. And... You know, that, that pretty much is how that works. That's how the layer brush works. So the layer brush does it on a layer. Oh, there you go. It does it on a layer. That's why I put the layer brush. All right. We're really getting off subject here. So back to the brush palette. There's a lot of brushes in here. Let's just go through some of the brushes that you would typically use. Crash course here. Um, move brush. When you're starting out, you want to use the move brush. Most important brush there is. Why use the move brush? Well, basically, it's because you'll get all your shape. You'll get the shapes down first. 
you got to get your silhouette down. Also, if you press C, you could see my thing just got dark. Right. So this is good like to work on the silhouette. Right. I just press C. I think C is the one you pressed. Don't quote me on it. But yeah, I think it's C. My move brush acting weird because I have this color spray thing on, which just shouldn't be on. Actually, I think it's called my focal shift. Is it? Okay, let's go. Let's see. So, you know what? I don't even have. Um, I'm going to kind of undo that because I don't even have symmetry on. Make sure you press X and you have your symmetry on. If you don't have that symmetry on and you're trying to draw these things out, you're going to get some weird effects going on. All right. So I, I put the focal shift on a little higher so I can have more room to kind of move this over, you know, work, tweak this up. So right now, you know, typically, you, you know, you would use your move brush to start off with, right? And you would just work on just making a cool shape. You know, you need something that looks cool from all angles, right? So, you know, what can we make that looks so cool from all angles? I don't know. Let's just create anything. Sure, why not? Um, and make this real small. I'm gonna do this. I'm just press this real quick. I think you press T. No, it's not T. Y. No. R. No. Ah, I can't remember the button. But there's a there's something you can do to bring up like a quick menu and you know I can't even remember right now. I don't want I don't want to get off subject with it, but. You know, so right now I'm all I'm doing is I'm focusing on a silhouette. So just think of you just working in black, like you're just working on one view. You know, and you like how that looks, right? Then you tw you switch to this view and you can start pulling into a different shape. Make it look cool. You know, make something looks make something that looks cool. You gotta make it look cool. All right, now I'm not I'm not messing with the silhouette. The silhouette is the outline of the shape. You're making a star, that's the silhouette, you know, like the star shape. Like there, boom, we have a star. <laughs> but yeah, that's like, it's the outline of the shape. Yeah, so it's something, uh, it's important. I mean, because everything's built on top of the outline of the shape. So, and all I'm using right now, by the way, is just a move brush. Um, you know, it's important to do this. And I, I would advise you to, to kind of go into like a three-quarter view and work that view too. Like make sure make sure all your views are looking good, you know, from every angle. Pull out, push in. You know, I'm not going to go too crazy over this. I just wanted to show you how brushes work, more or less. But this is the first brush you would use. So I kind of like the way it looks. It looks kind of cool. Who knows what it is? Kind of looks like a, a robotic dog with his. He's like sniffing. He's sniffing the graph. He's like, "Hmm, nice graph. It smells good." Um, right here's your color picker. So I'm gonna take the color and I'm just gonna push it up, push it up, and you can see what the move brush did. Like it, it moved everything for us. You know, in in the shape. And the move brush has two uses. Um, it moves shapes, but it pulls them out too on the surface. If you hold Alt and you pull out, it pulls out the, something called the vertex normals. So it literally pulls it out from the surface, like in a in a in a straight way, basically. I guess you can say it's a straight, a straight kind of way. Um, so move brush is very cool, and. There's a lot of setting. This is all the brush. These are all the brush options, by the way. I'm not going to be able to go through everything like this. This is just so much stuff. Half of this stuff I don't even touch, to be honest with you. I encourage you to make custom menu. Well, I'll teach you guys that um, in a little bit. But 
maybe a future episode, but I just kind of wanted you to get your feet wet with ZBrush. All right, so we have a cool shape going on here. Now, right here, something called an AccuCurve. If I turn on AccuCurve, which is on the curve, which is in the brush menu, all right, and if I use the Move Brush now, I could pull points out, you know, which is pretty cool. You know, maybe I want this to be pointy. Like, there we go. You know, now it's really pointy. You know, it's kind of looking like a robotic dragon now or something. Um, and, you know, the AccuCurve is really cool. And it's, it's one of those kind of hidden features. You're kind of learning like a pro feature, like something the pros use right now. So if I kind of use that there. And we get like a cool effect. I'm not going to use it on this on this part, on that part per se, but you know. But you could see you see what it does. It kind of pulls points out basically with the move brush. So the accu curve is it's it's taking the move and it's pinching it and then pulling it out in in a way. All right, so that's accu curve. All right, so move is what you use first. Once you get the shape down and it looks good, the move with the move, right? What you can use then is you can use, um, I would use clay buildup probably. And clay buildup is nice. You could see that by default, this has an alpha already assigned to it, which is like a square. You could keep that on if you want. Um, but you could see what it does when it has that square alpha on it, right? You can kind of you can see that square, right? So you could change it out for something else if you want it like, you know, alpha O1. Then you get a nice smooth effect, right? The O1 alpha, or no alpha at all. But I would, I would say like alpha one is probably better to use. I mean, you can ex experiment. That's the whole thing with this if alpha 35. Let's try that one, right? Let's alpha one. Let's try that one. All right. Not much, not too much difference. You know, that, there's really not too much difference between those ones. I mean, so just use whatever you want. And then you can kind of just you know, go in here and just sculpt, sculpt out stuff. You know, hold alt, sculpt inwards. Um, you take this shape here and Sculpt this out here. Press Alt. You know, sculpt inwards. This is again. This is the clay buildup brush. Um, when you are sculpting, after you get your shape, after you get you know your silhouette with the move brush, what you want to do is use big, like you know, big strokes. Um, big strokes, yeah. But yeah, use big strokes. Um, kind of just blocking the um, forehead real quick, quick. But yeah, use big strokes. All right, to get what you want. Use some big strokes. Then, when you get to where you want to go, you can use small strokes. But let me explain something with the resolution. Because um, I'm going to have to explain this to you. It's going to be confusing until I do. But right now, you can see if I turn on polyframe, or you can press Shift F on your keyboard to turn on polyframe. Uh, if I zoom in here. You know, there's a dot. This dot, this is vertex. A vertex, vertex, vertex. Four vertexes equals a poly face. You know, a poly, um, which is in traditional three um, three D modeling softwares, right? You have, you can make a square or you can make a triangle. Well, ZBrush deals mostly with squares. Tries to put everything to quad or quads. They're known as quads. So one face makes a plane. You know, like a like a poly. So that's so right here, there is 45,000 polys right now. So we're pretty, we're high up. We're dealing with 45,000 polys right now. 
And if you could see when I, I do this on the surface, what's happening, let me zoom out. This is what my brush is actually doing on the surface. It's pulling out those vertexes. It's affecting those vertexes on the surface. All right, you could see some areas got a little messed up here, right? Um, so there's all different ways that we can deal with that, like to clean this up. Um, so basically, you can press, you can just press Control D first if you wanted to. Control D will subdivide your model. And to show you that, this is the older way of doing it. You can see right here under geometry, I'm at the fourth level of subdivision. So if I take this and slide this down, this is the first level of subdivision. Okay. And you're probably like, what are you talking about? But basically, this is the first level, it has less geometry. If you're making big changes, you make it at this level. You don't make it at your higher changes. Any change you make at level one, it'll translate all the way to that level four. So if I make a big change right now, right, with the move brush, right, let's just say I just take this and I just go like that. And then if I go up to level four, yeah. You could see like it held the change pretty well. Um, but if I'm already at level four and I try to make that kind of change, you know, it's not going to be as good. It's not going to translate as good. Um, so you make your big changes at your lower levels. Like you should have everything figured out, like at this level, one or two. You know, try to use try to use this mesh as much as you can, like before you jump the gun, you know, get everything the way you need. I mean that's the old way of working though. And then here we go, we at level four, right? So you can see a level four. They're stretching though, right? And I mean, if we look at this, the reason why they're stretching is because the squares, it's not as many, it's not evenly distributed, right? So there's ways that we can make it evenly distributed. Since we're just like creating something off the dome, the way that I would usually do it is I will go to geometry and I will go to Dynamesh, right? If I right here is Dynamesh and Dynamesh, right now is at a resolution of 32. If I do 32, it's going to be too small, so I'm going to bump it up to like. Well, I'll show you 32 first. If I do 32, you know, look at my mesh now though. You see how it, it cleaned it up? It cleaned up the squares so they're even. And you're probably wondering like, why? Why would I use this? You would use this. If you're just sketching something out like crazy, everything's going to get stretched. So you got to fix it. You got to fix everything to make it even again. So you got to use the Dynamesh, basically. Because if you don't, you can't work higher. You won't be able to get up higher levels to work. Um, let me just try 128. Okay. So I just kind of I type that in. I type in 128. Control drag on the screen when Dynamesh is on. Now, if we look at our mesh, you see how everything's a lot more even now. And remember that kind of stretching I had? I did have like a look of like stretching here. So what I can do now is I can use the smooth brush. Hold, hold the, hold shift and smooth out that area. And it'll be a little better. All right. You want a clean mesh basically. And it's going to take you some, I'm not going to lie. It's going to, it's going to take you a while before you learn how to do this properly. But I'm going to show you what you, I want to show you something. What you could do. You could just move this out. All right. Let's just say this is the shape that we want and it's nice and smooth. Let's say we're keeping the shape and then we, we're going to build on the shape. So first you want to get the shape the way you want it to look. All right. Let's say I like that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to click Subtool, and we're going to duplicate our mesh. Duplicate will make a, an exact duplicate of your mesh. Think of this as Photoshop layers in a way. Um, all right, so basically I have one layer here, I have one layer here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this layer for now. I'm going to rename this actually too so I can just show you what's going on here. Let's just call it. Um, let's just rename this to Dino High. 
All right, so I clicked rename. I just renamed it Dino High, and I'll just call this one Dino Low. Okay. Now this is the way I would typically work to to keep it a clean mesh because you don't want your geometry to get too high because then your program starts chugging. You want to really use this geometry. Like you want to use every layer of geometry. The more geometry you have, the harder it is to work with stuff. Okay. So what I want to do here is. I'm just going to click this to take the eye off for now, and I'm going to look at my low. This is going to be our low. You're like, what does that even mean? The low and high, right? So there's going to be a high res mesh, and there's going to be a low res mesh. I'm going to hold shift, click geometry, and I'm going to use something called Z Remesher. Okay, and Z Remesher, what it does is it, it remeshes your mesh to make it look clean. It's not Dynamesh, though. It's it's even better. It's cleaner than that. And I'm going to show you what it does. So I'm just going to use the default. I'm clicking Z Remesh. And I'm going to show you this. And it, it looks really clean. Wow. So you see that? It looks really nice and clean. That's what we want. We want something that's clean like that. Let me show you the other one, right? There's another way to work with this stuff, but this was our dynamist one. You see how the, ugh, that's ugly. You see how this is uh, has triangles and it's a mess. When you sculpt on that, it's harder to sculpt on when it's like that. It's not as clean as this. Sculpting on this is so much cleaner. You know, you can even see like this is going with the curve of things. You know, it, it looks so clean. So this is what you want to work with. Um, so we got a we got a low and our high. I got exactly what I need now. All right. I'm going to take off this poly frame. Maybe I'll keep it on so you can see what's going on. Maybe I won't keep it on. I'll take it off. This is an advanced thing, but there's something called a Z project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to project high detail onto this mesh. I'm going to click on this so it makes sure that this is selected. Right? Because this is our low. Right, our low. If I hit solo, I could see it, that this is our low. There's not much. There's not a lot of. Um, there's not. There's no. There's no uh, dynamic geometry level to it or anything. So don't even worry about that. So what we'll do is we'll go back to that, and we're just going to do a Z. We're going to hit project, and we'll do project all. All right, and then we'll look at this here. Alright. And um let's see project. And we're gonna go up a level. We're gonna hit control D. We just went up one level. We're gonna click project all. It's it's taking this, it's taking the information from this and it's bringing it into this basically. But with cleaner geometry, which is what you want, you want cleaner geometry. This is so important. And it's going to make your work look so clean. I mean, for now, you probably just want to get in there and play, but this is going to make it clean, clean, clean. So every, I hit Control-D. What's happening? It's building up subdivision levels. So we're at level one, level two, level three. A lot cleaner, very clean. There's no stretching. You know, there's none of those issues that we had before where, the, where it was like stretching out or anything like that. We don't have to worry about that. Project all. All right. So what you want to do is you just want to you want to work that until you get, you know, I got pretty much what I need now. If I switch, I have solo on. So if I click, if I click this, right? Oops. And then I click this. These look almost identical. So what what's so what happened here? Um, I'll show you. If I click this one, it's at eighty four thousand points. And this one's at 148. But the only reason it's at 148 is because I added more points to it. Right? But that don't that don't even matter. The, the most important thing is that we're saving on geometry, putting geometry where we need it. It's very clean. Alright, so let's get rid of I'm just gonna turn this off. You know what? Maybe I should delete it so it doesn't distract you guys, but I'll just turn it off for now. Um now we have a nice clean mesh. So now if I sculpt on this, right? 
you know, it's really clean. Super clean. You know, when people are new, they don't they don't know about this stuff, and it's and their meshes don't look as clean as they could. I mean, of course, if you if you do so crazy on the surface, like if you just keep going like this, you're gonna get stretching again. But let if you get the shape that you want when you're sculpting, right? And this is the shape I want. I'm good. You know, this is the shape I want it now. You know, I could start going over it. I could start adding to that shape that I want, right? So I could just smooth this out. I'm a little, I think I'm too high. I'm either too high up or not high enough. Probably too high up, yeah. I'm too high up. So I would go back down to subdivision level one. You know, I could go down to subdivision level one, sculpt this, go up. There it is, right? And then smooth it out. You know, and then it, it's a lot, it's a lot cleaner. You do need like a certain level of subdivisions though, so you don't get stretching. So, you know, I would just go up one more. Let's just go up one more subdivision level. Yeah, it's a little better. So, yeah, I mean that's stretching, but not even that much. It's not even really stretching that much. Hold on one second. Hello. Hi. Hey, what's up? 